Hello and welcome to City Hope Catch Up. This Sunday we had an amazing time because we had some baptisms uh, as well as John being with us to finish our series in the book of Acts. So looking forward to seeing both of those and on top of that in a little while I'm going to be back with some information about what's going on over the Christmas period. So without further ado let's have a little look at what happened on Sunday. Hello, um, my name is Rhea. I was born into a Christian family and into this church. Um, I've always been surrounded with God's love, and even, th even though everything was like sort of laid out in front of me, my relationship with God hasn't always been straightforward. I didn't have some sort of like epiphany from God, and I think that my faith has been gradual, starting from a young age and then growing, with some weak points and some strong points. I struggled a lot with not knowing if God was there or by my side, and I'm a sort of person who needs evidence for things. But God has revealed himself to me, sometimes not in the ways I would have liked. I want God to shape my life and take control of it, whether that be in Cambodia or in my life to come. I really want to surrender myself to him and do anything he wants, even though that might not always be easy. I remember God's love surrounding me all my life, even when I didn't realise it. Like when I was little and bursting into tears at the crucifixion story because it was at that moment that I understood the awesomeness of the sacrifice Jesus had made so I could have a relationship with God. I'm so thankful for him and also everyone in my life. I thank God for showing me his mercy and his grace and my heart cries to be God's vessel. I haven't always found faith easy, like comparing myself to the ways God speaks to others when sometimes I wasn't feeling anything. But after praying, I know that my faith in him is all that matters, and today I choose him. Hello, my name is Claudine. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, we've been coming to City Hill since early this year. Yeah, and um, yeah, as some of you know, I work as a nurse for the NHS. I came to this country in 2016, and um, yeah, um, originally from the Philippines. And my background, um, I was born into a Catholic mom. My father was an atheist. And um, I grew up like with my dad, and I never was um, introduced to faith. Uh, all my life, um, I've been, <laughs> I've been um, like, I'll be forward. Uh, I've been bad. But I've been, I'm real. yeah, I've been making fun of Christians because I thought, like, oh, Christians are just crazy exaggerate people <laughs> but no not like not, not. <laughs> but um yeah um i think all throughout my life um god's always been there though i didn't know him i didn't know how he worked uh, i've been rejecting him making fun of him and um i there's been tough moments in my life where i didn't even know that it was him but he did help me he he picked me up from bad falls <laughs> and um, yeah, he's just been great and I think the turning point where, because um, I was like two years ago, I went through something really, yeah, really drastic. Uh, I was told I'm never going to have a child, I was diagnosed with cancer and um, I have a baby. <laughs> So amazing, he's. Um, I don't know what, so I don't even have words because he's just too great. Um, yeah, I'm so glad that I knew him. Uh, thank you to my husband for for leading me to this path. Um, and I'm just so grateful. And um, City Hope, everyone, my friends. Uh, I'm so glad that I came here, and it's just been so amazing so far. And um, I give my life to Jesus. I surrender everything. Um, I just, yeah, I leave it all to you, God. Hi everyone, my name is Jen Taylor and I live in the Taylor family. <laughs> Church all my life. 
I also grew up in a Christian family. Um, one year at Christian Festival named Catalyst, I felt um, the Holy Spirit. I was 10 when I experienced the Holy Spirit. It was in the evening, we split into small groups, and in those groups we were doing worship. And that was when I experienced it. Now, after experience, experiencing the Holy Spirit, my life has changed, changed so, such as my room was just my room before, but now it is a place where I can listen and hear God. When I mess up, God forgives me and gives me a fresh start. The reason why I want to get baptized is because I want to commit my life to Jesus and follow Him, whatever it takes. Have you turned away from your sin? Yes. Have you put your trust in Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Saviour? Then I gladly baptise you in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. to celebrate and be a part of. Well, I told you that we were going big this Christmas and this light here is gonna go, this special star is gonna go up uh, as a beacon of light on our building so that everyone who's walking along Drummond Road over this Advent season will remember that Christmas is about the light of life coming into the world. And we've got lots of different activities and events to look forward to. First off, uh, on uh, Saturday, the 4th of December at 11 o'clock, we're doing carols at the farm. So head on to sub, uh, over to Southery Docks Farm where we're going to be singing all the great carols. You don't have to be an amazing singer, but we want to bless the community by being there. Secondly, we've got an event uh, going to be taking place on three Thursdays over uh, the Advent season. It's called Around the Major, and it's an opportunity for people uh, in the church, but also those that are just walking home perhaps from work, to come in and spend a few moments just reflecting over this season on what the purpose of life is and what the meaning of Christmas is. So that's seven o'clock uh, on three Thursdays over December. And then on Sunday, the 19th of December, that's our big Christmas special day. So in the morning we've got a kids club Christmas special with lots of fun games and activities for the kids and they're going to be hearing the Christmas story. And then in the evening we've got a carol service here at six o'clock uh, with the London Youth Choir and that's going to be followed by uh, mulled wine and mince pie. So we're going to have lots of fun throughout the whole season and then of course on Christmas day itself we're going to have a service um, taking place from 10 to 11 o'clock here on the, on the Saturday morning. So if you want to find out more about that or you want to get all of that information, just send us an email and we can uh, send you one of these Christmas at City Hope leaflets to let you know. But for now, uh, I'm going to hand over to John who's going to conclude our series in the book of Acts. Jesus said... When two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst. And Jesus is with us in this moment. So let's stand and say this prayer together. Just lift our hands. We say it together. Lord Jesus, we meet in your name. Thank you that you are with us. I open myself to you. Let my thoughts, desires, and priorities glorify you. Holy Spirit, fill me afresh. Teach me new things about you and your ways. Amen. Today we conclude our current section on the book of Acts with one final story. And it's a story about Joe. And uh, there are 
aspects of Joe's story that I hope will be particularly helpful and relevant to Claudine, to Rhea, and to Jed. And you guys have publicly uh, declared your faith and commitment to the Lord Jesus. And nobody can predict how your journey ahead will be. But I guarantee two things. There will be lows and there will be highs. There will be high highs and there will be low lows. That is part of the human condition. And the second thing is, you have chosen the very best captain. In fact, the only captain who not only knows the way ahead, but who will be with you all of the way. To really understand Joe's story, we have to rewind the video back to the beginning of the New Testament. And the Romans are in charge. And Julius Caesar had already been to Bermondsey. Because 54 years later after that event... A poor peasant couple who couldn't even afford basic maternity care had a child who revolutionized the world. Jesus was born 3,000 miles away from Bermondsey in Bethlehem. But he was to take on another name, Christ, which means Messiah, Rescuer. And he doesn't overturn these Romans, as many people wanted. He overturned Satan's power over people's lives. Satan's control, who is the real enemy of mankind. Through his death and resurrection, Jesus provides a way for you and me to be forgiven and to be put in right relationship with our Father who made us. Let's look at a few things, uh, a few remarkable things that Jesus said. The great signpost. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And then there's the golden rule. Jesus said, so in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. And then there's a great commission. Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And that's where Acts and Joe's story begins. You see, Joe wasn't one of the 12 disciples, but he was definitely a follower of Jesus. We don't know whether he'd met Jesus face to face or had actually become a believer after he ascended. And we don't have a record of when and where he was baptized. He just turns up in Acts. Now, here's a couple of pub quiz questions for you. Hands up for this. Who was the first man on the moon? Put the hand up if you know. Who was the first man on the moon? Oh, come on, guys. I was hoping for better than that. Yeah, okay. We're gradually getting it. Hands up high. Okay. Who was the first man on the moon? Neil Armstrong, not Louis Armstrong. Neil Armstrong. Right, here's the second question. Who was the second man on the moon? No calling out. Very few people know that. And the answer is Buzz Aldrin. You see, everybody remembers, or most people remember, who was first. But very few people Remember who was second. You see, Joe was like Buzz, a bit forgotten. Most people didn't know about Joe, but if it wasn't for him, there's a possibility we might not be here today. You see, most people 
remember Paul, the apostle, as the key character in the Acts of the Apostles. Fewer people know much about Joe. So let's find out about Joe as we look at Acts uh, chapter 4, verse 32 to 37. And it tells of what was happening with the very early believers in Jerusalem. All the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of their possessions was their own, but they shared everything they had. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And God's grace was so powerfully at work in them all that there were no needy persons among them. For from time to time, those who owned land or houses sold them, brought the money from the sales and put it at the apostles' feet. And it was distributed to anyone who had need. Joseph, a Levite from Cyprus, whom the apostles also called Barnabas, which means son of encouragement, sold a field he owned and brought the money and put it at the apostles' feet. Joe, or Joseph, as his mum used to call him, appears out of nowhere. He was an early follower of Jesus who originated from Cyprus. And the apostles spotted Joe's core personality, his core gift. And they gave him a nickname. And that nickname was Son of Encouragement, which in Aramaic is Barnabas. Bar means son of. And he was known, his nickname was Barnabas. Being an encourager was a key part of his identity. Now, what is an encourager? An encourager is somebody who gives courage to others. Is someone who inspires faith and strengthens others by standing alongside them. Joe was secure in his identity. He was secure in his relationship with his maker and his savior. When we become Christians, not only do we discover God's purpose for our lives, but we also find our identity in him. Claudine, Rhea, Jed, know your identity. You can join in with King David when in Psalm 139, verse 14, where it says, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Know your identity. You are designed by the great designer. Let's praise God now, right now, by saying together this. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Louder. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Louder. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. There's no harm and every benefit in saying that every day. In Jesus, we find our purpose and our identity. Joe was wired by God to bring courage to others. What are you wired by God for? How has God wired you? Maybe the wiring has been tangled and messed around with. Ask God to put you back into shape. To be who he made you to be. Ask right now. Right now. What is God saying to you right now? Charlie Carlisle, who we heard from earlier, 
was recently asked what God has made her to be. And she said, a shadow lifter. I love that. A shadow lifter. God has lifted shadows from Charlie's life. And he will help her to do that for others. So what happened to Joe or Barnabas? How did he live out the rest of his life as a son of encouragement? First up, we have just read of what uh, had happened. He sold a field and he gave the money to the mission of Jesus. He was wanting to pass on what God had passed on to him. Do you want to do that? We then don't hear about Barnabas for another 10 years. And we come to Acts 9, and a lot's changed. And in Acts 9, uh, there were two major events. Firstly, persecution hit the fledgling church. One of the church leaders, called Stephen, who ran Food Bank and Social Action and Fab, had been stoned to death. Secondly, Saul, the chief persecutor of Christians, had a dramatic conversion. Understandably, the Christian leaders became very suspicious when Saul came knocking on their door. And so we read here in Acts 9, When Saul came to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him, not believing he really was a disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles. He told them how Saul on his journey had been, had seen the Lord, and that the Lord had spoken to him, and how in Damascus, He'd preach fearlessly in the name of Jesus. Who welcomed Saul in? Joe, the son of encouragement. Who welcomed you in? Who welcomed you into God's kingdom? Have you thanked them? Have you thanked God for them? And who are you welcoming in? If I've been welcomed in, which we have, I need to welcome others in. Wind the clock forward another five years. Christians had been scattered across other countries and cities because of persecution. But that didn't stop the followers of Jesus sharing their faith. And in Acts 11, we read of a great number of people becoming Christians in one of the great Roman cities uh, of the Roman Empire called Antioch, 500 miles north of Jerusalem. Who sent to help them, encourage them, teach them? Joe, the son of encouragement. Who does he get to help him? Saul. And so for three years, Barnabas, Joe, and Saul teach this brand new church. And then during a worship time, just like we've had today and we'll be having later, the Holy Spirit spoke to them, to the gathering. And there was a sense that Barnabas and Saul were to be set apart for a new venture, to go to Cyprus and what is now modern-day Turkey, to break new ground with the good news of Jesus. And they brought the gospel to people outside of the tight Jewish community, to Gentiles, to the likes of you and me. They broke down barriers. Uh, These were heady and exciting days, but also filled with violent opposition and near-death experiences. Yeah, they had high highs and low lows. It wasn't for the faint-hearted. And in Cyprus, Saul changes his name to the Roman version of his name, which is Paul. 
That's where we get St. Paul's Cathedral from. Initially, Barnabas, Joe, was recognized as the leader. They entered Cyprus, it says, as Paul and, sorry, as Barnabas and Saul, but they left Barnabas, uh, sorry, they left Cyprus as, uh, sorry, they left Cyprus as Paul and Barnabas. Get that right. I got, I, they entered as Barnabas and Saul, but left as Paul and Barnabas. It had flipped. The protege had become the leader. He was now to set the direction and the pace. He had been groomed, and now we see him taking the lead. And then in Acts chapter 15, verse 36, we come to the last story about Barnabas in Acts. And this may be seen as a very sad and disappointing story. Four years after returning from that first missionary journey, they're ready to go again. You see, we've covered a 20-year story. We think the Acts is all happening all the time. It's 20 years, right up to chapter 15, where Joe, the son of, encourage, uh, son of encouragement, Barnabas, has laid down his life for others. He supported and included Paul when nobody else had. He'd seen his protege take the lead. And now there is a rift. There is a sharp disagreement. And we're going to read that now. I will then. I know you're looking forward to this. Here we go. Sometime later, Paul said to Barnabas, let us go back and visit the believers in all the towns where we preach the word of the Lord and see how they are doing. Barnabas wanted to take John, also called Mark, but Paul did not think it wise to take him because he had deserted them in Pamphylia and had not continued with them in the work. They had such a sharp disagreement that they parted company. Barnabas took Mark and sailed for Cyprus, but Paul chose Silas and left, commended by the believers to the grace of the Lord, and he went through Syria and Cilicia, strengthening the churches. Paul said, I'm not taking John Mark with us. He let us down when we were in Turkey. He couldn't cope. He just upped and left. He's too much of a risk. Barnabas says, I know he let us down. He's a bit of a snowflake. But I supported you, Paul, and I'm not giving up on him. I want to give him a second chance. He can come through. In Paul's mind... They can't be carrying on what will be a dangerous mission somebody who will be a weak link. And they just can't agree. So what happened? They split. Yes, Paul and Barnabas split. Rather than them both going back to Cyprus and then on to Turkey, they split the mission. Paul teamed up with Silas and headed back to Turkey. Barnabas and John Mark went to Cyprus. And that's the last we hear of Barnabas in the Acts of the Apostles. On the face of it, it looks like a very disappointing finale. Claudine, Rhea, Jed, I said there will be lows and disappointments. And sometimes it will come from other Christians. Don't flinch. Your faith is not in others. It is, it is in the one who is the captain of your soul, Jesus. Your faith is not in others. It is in the one who is the captain of your soul, Jesus. I loved what Rhea was sharing. It's not about feelings. 
is about faith in the one who saved us. Thank you. Barnabas could have thrown his toys out of the pram. He could have pulled rank, but he refused to use his clout to overrule or cause trouble for Paul. Why? Because he knew his identity. Remember, Joe was a son of encouragement. He kept going because Jesus said, go into all the world and make disciples. So what was the outcome after this? What happened? Well, we know the partnership was broken, but the friendship wasn't. Because we read elsewhere in Paul's letters how he speaks affectionately of his friend Barnabas. And now we have two mission teams, one going into Europe for the first time and one going to Cyprus. And very potentially, it also went into North Africa. And you know what? When things like this happen, God knows what he's doing. In spite of our human frailties, God is an expert at making lemonade out of lemons. You see, John Mark, who had been let down, is given the chance to learn valuable lessons. And we know that from two sources. Firstly, we read in Philemon, one of Paul's letters, he mentions that Mark is helping him when he's in prison. And then also in Timothy, 2 Timothy 4, when Paul is nearing the very end of his life, He writes to Timothy and he says this. He says, Luke alone is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you. For he is very useful to me in my ministry. Secondly, we know that later Mark had the awesome responsibility and privilege of writing the second gospel. Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. That is some turnaround. God uses the time Mark has alone with Barnabas to mold him into a champion and become a dear friend of the man who once rejected him. I want to finish with my own Barnabas story. Barnabas and I went for a walk along the River Thames a few weeks back. This Barnabas is my six-year-old grandson. We were walking along the foreshore with Canary Wharf uh, in the background, and all of a sudden, I heard a shout, I'm a genius! I say, what's that, Barnes? And he says, Pops, look what I found. And he shows me this pipe. It's an old clay pipe about 150 years old and almost intact. Uh, Just by the way, if you go mudlarking, you do need a license from the Port of London Authority, which I have. (coughs) The reason I tell this story is that Barnes has a very healthy, childish view of who he, he is. He is a genius. God has made you a genius. Not like Einstein, but to be who you are. It may be to be a shadow lifter. It may be to be a son or daughter of encouragement, or it may be to be a writer about Jesus, or it may be something else. But he made you uniquely, fearfully and wonderfully made. In Jesus, you find your purpose and your identity. There's a lot of talk today about discovering identity. There's not so much talk about Jesus Get the balance right. Seek first the king, and then you'll discover yourself. Amen. As the band...
just come back and they're going to be playing for us. I want to ask um, if you feel that God has spoken to you personally. Over the years, I've learned that it's best for me to capture at the moment when God speaks to me and to capture it in prayer. Otherwise, it can evaporate very, very quickly by less important stuff and noise. And if you today want to make a step forward in some way, I'd ask you to stand right now. If God's spoken to you and you say, I want to make a step forward today, God's spoken to me very specifically, just stand right now. And I'd like you to just say this with me. And even if you're not taking a step forward today, you can join in this prayer. Thank you, Lord, that you have spoken to me. Let's pray together. Thank you, Lord, that you've spoken to me. I place myself at your disposal. I know that I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I thank you for your purposes in my life. And I want King Jesus to rule. And I give myself to you and ask that you'd have your way within me. I want to be the person you made me to be. Fill me afresh with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, that was a strong and challenging word from John, so thank you very much for that. Don't forget all of the bits of information I gave you about uh, the Christmas uh, season uh, going on here at City Hope. Uh, If you want to find out some more about it, please feel free to email us. We'd love to get in contact. But for for now, have a wonderful week and we'll see you very soon.